Windows 11 sucks. Here's how to fix it. Since the launch of Windows 11 back in October, over six months ago, there's been a lot of people who are hesitant to upgrade because number one, it gets rid of familiar features. Number two, it puts things in places that they shouldn't be. And number three, seems to be an unnecessary upgrade for most. But in case your PC is forcing you to upgrade or you got a new laptop and it's just installed, here are 11 ways that you can make Windows 11 better. And the two most important ones that you need to know are at the very end, so stay tuned for this. Number Number one, disabling or uninstalling applications you don't want or need that Microsoft or your system vendor install. Microsoft loves to load up on Windows applications that are unnecessary, as well as companies like Asus, Lenovo, HP, they're all guilty of it. They put too many applications, so it's very simple. In order to get to settings, you just hit the Windows key, type in settings, or you can right click on the Windows logo and go to settings that way. Number two, let's disable some of those annoying notifications. There's nothing more annoying than you constantly getting bombarded with Windows just telling you that everything's happening all at once. So you go to settings, you go to system, which you can go directly to system by hitting Windows plus I. Then go to notifications and you can uncheck offer suggestions on how I can set up my device and uncheck get tips and suggestions when I use Windows. That's gonna make things so much easier. And in case you're not a fan of the sounds that happen with notifications, there's actually an easy way to turn that off. And by easy, I mean difficult. You have to right click on the volume, go to sound settings, then scroll down and go to more sound settings. Then while you're in the sound options, you go to sounds. And when it says sound scheme, you click on that and you click no sounds and you will no longer get any of the Windows default sounds that happen to pop up, which is actually more frustrating than the physical pop-ups in my opinion. Next, we're gonna disable the unwanted taskbar icon. One of the big draws to Windows 11 is the fact that I got more Mac OS in its styling, but we can make it look a little bit better by reducing the number of icons and only permitting what we actually want to use. Especially because Windows 11 doesn't allow you to right click on certain items on the taskbar and just instantly get rid of them like they allowed you to on Windows 10. So you have to go to settings, personalization, taskbar, or you can right click on the taskbar and go to taskbar settings. And then you need to expand the taskbar corner overflow tab and items tab. And then you need to toggle on and off the things that you want. Like if you don't want the weather thing down at the bottom, you can remove that as well as things like a search task view and widgets. You don't need to have them there. However, they come on by default and you actually can't right click to get rid of them. You have to go through the menu, which is super stupid. Now, if you want your taskbar to actually look a little bit more like previous windows, instead of Mac OS, you can align it to the left by going to taskbar settings, taskbar behaviors, and then taskbar alignment by selecting left from the dropdown. Which then fix another tweak that Microsoft decided to just implement for funsies in Windows 11. Next, to make sure you're getting the most out of your system, we're gonna check our power settings because if your system's a laptop, Windows is gonna typically set everything to be power savings when you're on battery, or even if you're on a desktop, they're not gonna set you into high performance mode. So you go to settings, system, or again, hitting Windows I, and then go to power and battery, at which point you can select the different power modes that you want. If you want more oomph while you're actually on battery on a laptop, you can set that to best performance, or if you want extended battery life, you can drop it down to the battery's preserver one. Next, we're gonna set up God Mode. This is something that we've covered in a dedicated video recently, which you can check right up there, but it allows you to easily have access to a lot of the settings that Microsoft has decided to bury in all of their setups. So you need to set up God Mode by going to the desktop, creating a new folder, entering in this string of text, and then that will give you an easy access desktop icon to allow you to access all of the control panel settings that Microsoft is otherwise hiding. You can also create desktop shortcuts of the different settings that you access all of the time to just make it simple and easier on yourself. Now, Windows 11 is not necessarily the first operating system to try to force you to use the Edge browser, but it is by far the most difficult to actually change to another browser to be your default. So let's go through how to actually make a new default browser or other new default applications. You go to settings, apps, default apps. Then if you have Chrome or Firefox or Brave or whatever browser you want installed, you go to set default at the top of the page. But the trick here and what makes Windows 11 worse is that you have to set the default application dependent on the file extension. You could set it so that it opens up HTML easily, but it might not open up PDF. You have to set each of these 
manually, and it's just, it's an unnecessary annoyance where Windows 10 made it easy, where you could just say, I want my default browser to be this. Next is a setup that kind of applies to all Windows, but it's how to update your drivers to make sure that you're running on the latest and greatest, whether that's for performance, security reasons, or otherwise. So you go to settings, Windows updates. Typically, Microsoft will have drivers set up here. If you need something like a GPU driver, you can go to the vendor of your GPU's website, such as NVIDIA or AMD, or potentially you can also go over to the device manager and then check for driver updates there. Now here's a real convenient one in case you ever use the snipping tool on Windows. You can actually create a really easy shortcut in order for you to continue to use the snipping tool and you can just use the print screen button. You go to settings, accessibility, keyboard, then you toggle on, use the print screen button to enable screen snipping. And then you might need to restart your PC in order for this to work, but when you hit print screen, the snipping tool will pop up, which is a super handy dandy way of actually being able to capture what's on your display and not the entire display. Now we're down to the last two. We've done nine. Let's do the last most important updates, especially because Windows 11, especially when you're setting it up for the first time, does not allow you to set it up offline, you have to log in. It's a very frustrating thing, but you can convert it into a local account after you have Windows 11 all set up. So in case you'd rather not be logged into your Microsoft account, you hit Windows I to get into settings, you go to accounts, your info, and then right there, it says sign in with a local account instead. Then you follow all the prompts for all of that, and then once you have Windows 11 installed, you can convert it back to being just a local account and not giving Microsoft access to everything that you're doing on their device. This is not exclusively a Microsoft problem. Mac forces you to log in as well, but it's a new feature on Windows 11 that a lot of people do not like. And now let's talk about the most important thing, the thing I forget to do all of the time, but actually it would save me hours of hassle if I had ever done this. And that is creating a system restore point especially once you have Windows 11 configured to the way that you want it, making sure that if something goes wrong, you can restore it to this functionality quite easily. So it's very simple to do this. You go to the start button, you search for create a restore point, and then you click the top result under protection settings, you click create, and then you type a descriptive name for the restore point, and then you click fresh install you're off to the races. And now your Windows 11 hopefully won't be as broken as it was when you first got it. Do you know any Windows 11 tweaks that we didn't mention in today's video? Let us know down below in the comments or I'm gonna skin my McDonald's chicken nuggies and eat them naked. The nuggets are naked, not me.